The environment's a really remarkable topographical feast. You've got these plunging canyons and valleys. You've got flat top hills everywhere. It's a visual feast. It's a land of cliffs, narrow spaces, mysteries. You can hide away in here for a long time and not be found. And it seems someone wanted to do exactly that, because hidden away deep in the rocks are some extraordinary remains. What's unique about this scene is if you were walking along and didn't happen to glance up, you might miss it. This is an area that holds a lot of history, but it's not always visible on the surface. And it isn't just one or two of these remains. They are everywhere. They go on and on and on. It's not just a, a few small dwellings. It's actually, you know, a sort of town, almost like a city in the cliffs. They're truly awe-inspiring, not only because of where they are, that they're on rock face, that they're high up, but the sheer size of them. There are little cliff dwellings tucked in almost everywhere. Very hard to see in some cases. Far off the ground, incredibly remote and inaccessible. So why are these remains here? And what terrifying danger were the people who built them hiding from? In the late 19th century, a group of men made an amazing discovery. So I have something pretty incredible to show you, but first we have to get up to the top of the ladder. Christy Brown is a guide at the site. She has spent the last 15 years studying the ruins and learning more about the people that built them. So we just climbed 32 feet up this ladder, but we're hundreds of feet above the canyon bottom, and we're about to go into Balcony House. The men who discovered this site stumbled upon it by accident. The first, you know, people that we really credit with discovering these sites were the Weatherills. They were a ranching family out of Mancas, and they started recognizing, you know, what they were seeing as dark shapes on the cliffside was actually a cliff top. Can you imagine what it was like to scramble up here and walk into these ancient homes and realize you might be the first person to set foot in here since the original inhabitants left. In fact, the group had accidentally discovered one of the most important ancient sites in North America, Mesa Verde. But what had they found? Who built it? And why is it now abandoned? In the dry southwest of America is Mesa Verde, a site that laid forgotten for centuries. After its discovery, you could imagine, uh, as an archaeologist, this would be an absolute playground. So there was a lot to be uncovered. And as they started digging away, they found more and more and more. So just like any true curiosity, you know, the more we learn, and the more the early archaeologists learned about what was going on here, the more questions they had. The mysteries were vast, but there are clues that lie in the buildings that can help identify who these people were and when the buildings were built. So we look at the openings of these sites, and we think that they're windows because they're so small. But in actuality, they're doorways. And that helps us understand how tall these people were in stature. And we look back in history, and we can start dating you know, when these people might have been around this area. Once archaeologists really began to investigate these cliff dwellings, they realized this was an era of Native American life that we didn't know anything about and it predated 
all of the, the tribes and peoples that were in that region when the first people of European descent started to come into that area. The archaeologists discovered this was home to the ancestral Puebloans. The ancestral Puebloans had to have been very skilled, not only in terms of making baskets, making pottery, making things that would sort of help serve everyday life. They engineered this space, and it's something to really marvel at. So many amazing discoveries were made, but the most enlightening and incredible was that the cliff dwellings at 800 years old were just the tip of the iceberg. This was just a small piece of a bigger part of a huge puzzle. The archaeologists have unearthed some 4,700 sites over tens of thousands of square miles that these people have made a success over many, many years living in this area. Curiously, these precarious sites were not their first homes. So although the cliff dwellings were some of the first sites to be discovered, the archaeologists realized that the history of these people went back much, much farther. What we're seeing here is one of those dwellings that they were living in before they were in the cliff dwellings. This Pueblo-style construction allowed them to be closer to their crops and at the same time allowed them to take advantage of habitation for their expanding population. The ancestral Puebloans thrived on these mesa tops. At its height, there were 30,000 people living in the area. They developed roads, built sun temples, reservoirs, and farmed the land. The ancestral Puebloan people were able to command around 40,000 square miles of land. This puts them on par with the sort of most important ancient civilizations in the Americas. And so they're incredibly significant. They were able to establish an empire, if you will. But then something changed. They suddenly decided in the late 1190s to give up all they had on the mesa tops and migrate from the flats to the cliff enclaves below. One has to wonder why it is that a culture that was doing so well on the mesa tops moved into these cliff dwellings. And then the mystery deepens whenever you realize that they were only here for a short period of time and then they left. Whatever drove these people from their open villages and their mesa top farms into these remote, dangerous, difficult cliff dwellings, it must have been a powerful force. You have to wonder whether there were ecological concerns or whether they were trying to find more secure dwellings. They might have been at war with other indigenous people. And so there are all sorts of things that are kind of hard to know. There must have been something that was so terrifying that they would take these risks of dragging their families, their babies, up these cliff faces to live in these tiny, cramped little rooms. But whatever it was that they were fleeing from made it worth it. 